Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mark and this is why I think that supercar prices can only go up. Well, I bought my Ferrari 308 uh, back in a time when classic car prices were reasonable. Uh, pretty normal. <clears throat> Back in that days, you could buy an F40 for about 300,000 euros or something. And a poor man's Ferrari like mine will cost you only about 30,000 euros. And the truth is, that's only 10 years ago. These days, an F40 will do between 1 and 1.3 million uh, euro. Uh, I just saw one for sale, the blue one, I think. Or the green one, I don't know. Um, special uh, car, been on the internet a lot, but their asking price is 1.2 million euros. And well, if you buy a brand new special edition Ferrari, um, you gotta be sure, if you, you are sure that you're not gonna lose any money on it. The prices are going up directly after delivery. It's just insane. And it doesn't always only happen to Ferrari, but all brands have the same problem. Well, problem. For some not, but for some it's a problem. Uh, but also special, uh, for normal, uh, uh, special classic cars have the same problem. If, if you go on the internet and try to find yourself a little MG or something, then you find that all these prices went up extremely. <clears throat> and of course, these numbers uh, I'm talking about are based on the internet prices. The reality is uh, that doesn't say anything about the sell prices. But the reality is that I don't think it's far off, uh, not as far as, as there's a trend in that. Um, and simply, your money is worth nothing on the bank, uh, at least here in Europe. Uh, in, in the Netherlands, we have, a, a, how do you call it, negative interest rate. So uh, that's starting to come. So that means that, well, you can better buy a car because when you have a car standing in your garage that keeps the money, then you don't have to pay taxes other than the road taxes. And well, it doesn't depreciate in money. Um, but now I hear you say, well, Mark, it might be true, but wait until the bubble bust burst, 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 burst. Uh, well, I think it might burst, but I think it will fill up very quickly after that. And this is why. Well, before we continue, I want to make clear that I'm mostly talking about the European, especially the Dutch market, uh, because I don't have any knowledge of the markets in Japan or China uh, or America. I see what's happening on the internet, but that's all I have. Uh, also, I think that uh, especially in America, also there, the prices are very high. And you know, when we go back to the current situation, um, it's a fact that we are damaging this planet. And we have to learn to use our resources properly um, because otherwise there's nothing left for our kids. Um, so we have to do something and the main focus right now is reducing the pollution we cause. <clears throat> For most governments, that means that the car is an easy target. Very simple. Um, there's a growing package of, of targets, of, of, of uh, rules uh, manufacturers have to comply to, to well, uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, at least the car doesn't pollute anything. And the question is, is that realistic? But well, it is what it is. Uh, and despite the fact that most manufacturers have announced that they will stop production of cars with the internal combustion engine and start to focus on the uh, EV, the electric ver electrical ver electric ver vehicle, so that's me. Okay, sorry for that. <clears throat> I got sometimes a little shortcut in my brain, I think. Um, well, but 
Manufacturers are quitting the or leaving the internal combustion combustion engine as it is and started focus, focusing on the electrical vehicle, the EV, we're going to call it right now. So I don't have to slip my tongue anymore. Um, and I think they are forced to. It's not because they think it's the best choice. Uh, many internal combustion cars introduced right now are said to be the last of its kind. And I think that is quite sad. Don't you think so? Um, but it does something with the future pricing. Take a look at the 458. It's the last, one of the last Ferraris with a natural aspirated engine, uh, no turbo. Eh? I don't mind the turbo, uh, by the way, because look at the F40. But, well, eh? but the 458 has something special. And that means that after the first initial depreciation the car had, it's now keeping its value. And I think that will happen again with the current models like the 296 they just introduced. These cars are the last of a, yeah, of, 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 of an age, of an era. So they're gonna keep his, their value. Um, and well, although the EV is the future, according Around 1900, a decade ago, a decade or longer, how long is a decade? Well, uh, around the year 1900, most cars were electric. Yes. And in the early 20s, I believe, the electric car was beaten with the uh, internal combustion engine or by the internal combustion engine because that was cheaper. Uh, at that time, uh, had a longer range, still has, and uh, it was much more reliable, uh, uh, like Ford, uh, for example, he uh, made the, yeah, the internal combustion engine a very reachable car. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean, I think. Um, but this time the EV has a plus, regulation. Yeah, but still, I think the first obstacle will be the consumer. And when I speak to people, uh, there there are some early adopters, uh, like the, the when the iPhone came out, you got people that immediately buy uh, bought the, the phones. Uh, I'm a Samsung guy, if you want to know. Um, <clears throat> I don't care actually, but okay, uh, you got some early adopters, they like it, they like new technique and, and, and it is also, it's a little bit exciting, uh, but most people have nostalgic feelings with the internal combustion engine, a special pet for heads like us. And what I think that's going to happen when you start pushing people to do something, the normal reaction is that people tend to do exactly the opposite, at least that's how mine, mine works. That's my wife. Um, and well, yeah, this could mean that people are going to postpone the, 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 the uh, step to the, in, the EV as long as possible. But with no new cars with an internal combustion engine coming to the market, that might do something with the price. And we see it here already here in the Netherlands. Prices for second-hand cars are going up because there are too little cars available. And also the, 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 the overall age of the car, how do you call that in, in, in English? Um, uh, all the cars in, 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 in Holland driving around, uh, they're getting older. And I don't think that is something that the governments want, but it is happening. And also, I think the EV, electrical vehicle, starting to get to learn the English, huh? Yes. Um, but I think it relies on an extremely expensive and fragile infrastructure. Sorry. There goes my voice. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now back to the subject. Uh, infrastructure. Because energy, um, 
is, is, is created at a central place. Hey? You have a big city and you have one building that creates all the energy we need and transport it with cables in the ground or in the sky. And then we end at the charging station and there is your EV waiting to be charged. And if you're lucky, the charging station works because I saw a video of Shmi and that concerns me a little bit. It will get better, we know that. <clears throat> But still, charging isn't something you're going to do in five minutes. And although it will improve, I don't believe that in 10 years it will be very different. Because in 10 years, half of the population will drive older cars that still need longer time. Maybe there might be some changes that I'm wrong. Correct me, please, if I am. But still, um, this is not a burn up the EV. This is not, not, I'm not, that's not my intention. Um, but just, I, I just don't get it. I just don't, I don't, don't feel it, if you know what I mean. Um, so in the time span that the government wants us to transform from the internal combustion engine to the EV, uh, I think it's too short. I don't believe it. With the focus on the EV, I think they're forgetting something else, the alternatives. What about biofuel, hydrogen, maybe even water? I just, uh, a few years ago, I saw a comedian who said, well, guys, I know one day, and it was a long time ago with the oil shortage uh, we had, uh, the Gulf War, I think. But a comedian said, well, guys, there's going to be a press conference and uh, you have the president right here and you got the president of the Shell company sitting next to him. And they're going to kick off. Guys, people, ladies and gentlemen, we got an announcement. We got some good news and we got some bad news. The bad news is there's no more oil. Good news is you can drive your cars on seawater. And then the president will kick in, ladies and gentlemen, I got a second announcement to tell you. From now on, we are going to charge taxes on the seawater. Yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> so wouldn't it be better just to focus on all solutions, not only EV, but also on, also on. And maybe I think I am a firm believer that it's better to have decentral energy stations. So if you have one big city, I think it's better to have 50 or 100 or 1,000 different energy stations inspect, 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 no, better than one. <laughs> That's my belief. It, it's, it's a war strategy. I think it's better to spread them and you're less vulnerable and I think it might be even cheaper. But who, I'm not an expert, eh? this is just an opinion. So, but, the, the, well, <clears throat> um, I'm still burning the EV. That's not my intention. I'm trying to explain to you why I think that supercars are going up in value in the future. Um, but there's something, something else. Um, when I hear the news or hear mainly politics talk, they say, uh, kids don't care about cars anymore. Well, I don't know how much Instagram accounts, accounts I have seen this last year growing from car spotters. When I drive on the highway, every free spare time the kids have, they are standing there with their cameras, with their phones and making pictures of their dream car. And you can tell me a lot, but the, the car scene is very much alive. And these kids, when they grow old, they want the cars they see driving right now. So they want their 458 and they want their 488. And there's going to be a market for it. Even if the rest of the world is driving EV, there will still be a lot, lots and lots of important people also that want to drive fun cars, real fun cars. And 
Karloff doesn't rust. And these kids, yeah, they're the future. So with that in mind, I think that supply and demand will not be in balance anymore. Especially with exotics like Ferrari. <music> So again, this is just my opinion, what I think of the world, how I look at the world. But I think that as long as your money is worth nothing on the bank, prices for supercars, classic cars will be high. And as soon as the interest start to rise, the bubble might burst. But only for a, few, for a very short time. And soon after that, and maybe even sooner than you think, I think the prices will again break new records. And you know what? This is a quote I wrote it down before. I couldn't wait to tell you this. <laughs> now I think when I look at the world that that there there will no not yeah, no the world will never be completely united. That means that even if here in Holland an internal combustion engine is illegal I cannot use my car, there will always be a place in the world where I can ship my car to, have it maintenanced, drive it, raise it. So with that case, I'm going to, I'm going to have to move. But yeah, and reality is when a lot of people like I do care about our motor history, heritage, yeah then I think they cannot uh, make it illegal to drive a car like this. And, and, and some people say, well, in, but, but don't mind, in 25 years we will be driving, uh, the cars will be driving us. Nope. Maybe the cars can, but we can't handle it. I don't believe it. And with that bombshell, I want to thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, spread the word, and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you. Goodbye.